So what do you guys uh, got for me as far as like burning issues, website uh, critiques that you'd like me to do, um, brainstorming, what, what do we have? I'd like to get your feedback quickly on, on my site on where it's going from here and then specifically SEO we hadn't covered uh, yet. Okay. Where, where to put what keywords type thing, whether the headline is big enough. So that's, that's for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got something. Um, just curious. I was playing around, just optimizing SEO for search um, terms for my site last year. And it, I was getting like five or 10 visitors a day. And um, I think due to Google algorithm updates, that helped, but now I'm up to like 1500 a day and I'm turning up number one in some cases for um, table tennis rules um, and certain things. Um, I just wanna know, I'm just trying to kind of brainstorm about how to optimize uh, either conversions or newsletter signups or product sales, because I know exactly where they're going. and I, There's nothing on the page except for good content. I'm trying to figure out how best to place either um, you know, calls to action for certain um, activities from users. Okay. And if you can put into the chat, uh, you guys' websites, so that'd be great. Nandika, Harry, what do you guys have? Hi, Stefan. Uh, Hi. Thank you for the call, by the way. Very grateful for be, to be here. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, Technically, you know, this is my first call and, and learning this space. Uh, my site is very much a work in progress. So I, there's a bit of confusion as far as, um, you know, how I should drive my SEOs and, and, and things like that. So I will drop in my site because I'm just barely starting out. All right. And Stefan, I think I mentioned to you, <clears throat> I do work with uh, one of our metal brothers, Chris Heyman as a yeah. digital agency, sonicgods.net. And I brought him a client, it's Visit Palm Springs. Uh, and I wanna get them to start spending on you know, SEO. I think they need it. We've got a project to do with them and everybody's so busy. I'm trying to get a call set up with uh, you and Chris and myself, maybe his, one of his, his team members, but um, I think the guys are a priority, but when we have time, I'd love to look at really what Chris is, sonicgods.net, you know, he's going to update his website, but what our client, uh, Visit Palm Springs, it's really Visit Greater Palm Springs. There's an actual prom, Palm Springs proper site, and that gets confusing, and there's a Greater Palm Springs, and any insight you can give us that would be ammunition to convince them to, you know, allocate funds for SEO. Okay. What yeah. else? Yeah, so put the, the Palm Springs website into the chat. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's start digging in. Let's go to Ken's website first. And I'll share my screen. Okay. So Ken, what did you implement since we talked? The um, call to action. So we talked, I had a quiz there before. Mm -hmm. And uh, now the idea that they will take the quiz in order to get that PDF right there. Yeah. So that that's all fixed. I've re, re outlined underneath how it keeps going from there. But uh, now when you click that button, it will just take you straight into the quiz before asking for the email. Oh, good. And then at the end of it, there is a, here's the result based on that. Let's connect and here's your PDF. So that's, that's all been fixed. The PDF mm -hmm. itself will be redesigned as well, but. Okay. Just want to show you a couple of uh, examples of quizzes I think are pretty cool. Yeah. 
This one is, is on studio1design.com. So you have to, for this one, you have to put in your first name and email uh, to, to access it. But um, I do think putting it at the end is best. Uh, but anyways, that's, that's a pretty cool quiz if you go through it. Um, let's see, there's also askmethod.com. Let's see what quiz he has. Um, I'm going to have a quick look here to see where his quiz is. I'm, I'm going into my notes one second. This guy, uh, Ryan Levesque, is a master at using quiz funnels to get leads. So I, I recommend learning from him. He's got a book called Ask. It might be a good okay. place to start. But yeah, let me find his. Um... Are you on the phone? Uh-huh. Oh, sorry. You need something? No, but can you see? Yeah. Uh, it's a genius network presentation. Still looking. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Darn it, I'm not finding it. Okay, so I guess That's an exit uh, quiz, it looks like. Okay, there you go. Mine didn't trigger. Let me share my screen. Yeah. This popped up for me. Is this what you're talking about? Uh, that's a different one, but that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, there's actually a, a longer quiz that has like five or ten questions. Okay. But yeah, um, I'll find it in, <laughs> after afterwards. I don't want to have you guys wait. So let me share my screen again, and then I will walk through some different things I see as kind of next steps for you. Uh, I would remove the LinkedIn and social uh, links. So this the social chicklets because we want to get people to come from social media to your site and not go the other way. The likelihood they're going to come back after they go check out the candy shop and you know it's <laughs> Instagram <laughs> and all that is it, it's yeah okay not not likely. Okay, now you only have a couple of pages to the site, is it? You've got a home. Yeah, page we'll be adding a page? privacy page and uh, probably an articles page or something yet, but. Okay, so I would add a bunch of pages. I would add an about page. I would add um, a praise or testimonials page. I'd add a um, uh, maybe even a results page. Like what are some of the tangible results that you've gotten? Maybe a speaking page or a, like a perform performance page, something like how can we check out you as a, as a um, speaker, performer, entertainer, and uh, get a sense for what you do. It's okay. kind of like uh, the equivalent of a services page if you were just a consultant. No, not to say just. I mean, if you were a consultant, uh, what would be your services? That should be on a separate page. Okay. And uh, I do have a separate page. website for my performances specifically, which is just kensky.com, but that page needs major work too. I've been focusing just all my effort into doing this while I had the time for it. So. Got it. So what's the difference between kensky.com and kensky unlimited.com? 
Unlimited, this one that we're currently at, this focuses on producing virtual events. And KenSky.com is me as the performer, where people bring me in to perform. Okay. So this is all about producing virtual events. Okay. Correct. So I would recommend um, adding a services page then. Okay. All about the, like, what are the suite of services that you offer when you produce a virtual event for people? Got Do it. you handle, for example, uh, MCing? Do you handle Q&A? Do you handle, uh, like, getting entertainers to kind of inspire and, and, and uh, engage the audience virtually? Like what, what are all the different yeah, So I do all do? of that myself. Yeah. yeah. So that would be something that you would want to uh, delineate out all those services. That, okay. And then having also separate upgrade, pages. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Upgrade slide decks to a more 3d three-dimensional sort of experience. So instead of having a picture of butterflies on your PowerPoint, I make them fly through the screen like this. Oh, so cool. this is something that I created for John Livesey when he talks about, don't get rid of your butterflies, get them to fly in formation. So that we do something like this instead of wow, that's a picture cool. of them. I like it. Thanks. Uh, let's see. So um, yeah, multiple pages. What can you do with ping pong balls, Ken? Oh, I could probably do a bunch. <laughs> what can you do with ping pong balls? <laughs> Possibilities are endless, I bet. Huh, Ken? Yeah, I, I can certainly look into that. Uh, I'm a, I love playing ping pong. I haven't in a, a year, but uh, I love ping pong. So we'll have to talk about that, but also some graphic effects we can do. Yeah, let's let's talk about it. Cool. What else would you like me to cover on uh, your website? Ken? Just for SEO purposes, uh, keywords. Um, first of all, is the headline big enough uh, right there? This one, delivering virtual events. Yeah, does it need to it. fill up that space? I mean, I try to give. No, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so what are you trying to rank for? Um, virtual event producer, I think, is going to be my main keyword. I just I'm, I launched a Google AdWords campaign today, but Google AdWords has just been changed so much since I used it last time. So now I've got to rediscover everything there. So we'll see where that goes. Okay. Let me check to see if that. Because all my work has been word of mouth referrals. Somebody saw me and, and that's how I got all my work. I didn't, I didn't have to at all work on this last year, nor did I have the time for it. But now I've got a bit of a, a break in my events that I can actually do this, so. Okay. Well, virtual event producer, nobody searches for. Then I will not be ranking for that. Well, I mean, you could, but it's not going to help you. Because <laughs> a tree that falls in the forest, nobody's there. doesn't make a sound. <laughs> yeah. So let's try virtual events. Let's see virtual here. events is probably more, but that's, that could also be people looking to attend a virtual event, right? It could be, yeah. So let me see what uh, related keywords it comes up with. There's not much volume for virtual events. 100 to 200 searches a month across the entire United States in an entire That's month. Low. That's tiny. Yeah. Let's see what else it comes up with. Zoom also, events, maybe? But yeah, so there's already a company to go to meeting. So these aren't great suggestions. No, they're not really that really relevant. So party um, planner. I'm not a party planner, but yeah. party planners will bring me on to consult to make their event amazing. That's the idea. So it's really a service that works best by introduction, I find. But I thought if there is a way to, to do some SEO on this, then you'd be the person that would know. Yeah. Well. We just haven't found the right keywords yet. You got to go fishing where the fish are. And if people are searching for how to become an event planner and you're trying to reach those people who are uh, newbie event planners and they don't know what resources and, and uh, people to use and all that, 
that might be a good might be a good keyword not for the homepage necessarily but to create an article about how to become an event planner and then from there you say well here's an uh, an essential event planning checklist for new event planners so we're kind of on the side or as an ex exit pop up and then you get people's email address for that. And that has a soft sell in terms of your services. That's a good idea. Uh, I'll be I'll releasing be... a white paper with Mark Goulston, uh, seven, uh, what do you call it? Seven secret methods for highly effective virtual events type thing. Nice. And yeah, so that could, uh, that could probably be something that where this keyword would also. Yeah, but you get to come up with lots of different keywords and not just one yeah because you're targeting seasoned event planners new event planners uh, uh associations conferences uh like different kinds of folks speakers who want to up their game I think, yeah, speakers is going to be, there's a large group of speakers out there that don't know that, what is possible. And so my thought was if I can get somehow introduced to the speak, like speakers bureaus, but I mean, that would not be, that doesn't affect the SEO part, but I guess it's just a different way of getting access to those because there's so much stuff you can do as a speaker that a lot of people are not aware of. So, but if you're trying to target speakers bureaus and somebody at a speakers bureau is typing something into Google, what might they type in that your website could host? And then they would say, wow, that sounds really good. I should click on that. And then they read it and then they want to contact you. Perhaps it's like how speakers bureaus need to adapt in uh, during you know, COVID-19 times and how and, and where they're falling short. I'm like, mm, yeah, I need to know that. And then they click on that and then it's a great article. And it's like, now take the next step, download this checklist for the 15 things that all speaker bureaus need to implement uh, immediately in order to be future-proof uh, until the pandemic is completely over. Yep. Okay. So keyword research is going to help guide your content plan. And then you're going to need to write articles, uh, have a, a blog on this site. Would you still and... call it a blog or would you just call it articles on the menu? Uh, you can call it any number of things. Uh, on on stephanspencer.com, I call it a learning center. On uh... Resources. Yeah, resources, academy, university. Like it could be, for example, virtual event academy or virtual uh, event uh, mastery or virtual event uh, uh, central, virtual event university. And, you know, there's so many different kind of permutations that Bob, sound yeah. less kind of bloggy, but and more yeah. evergreen. That makes okay. sense. All right. So that's uh, some next steps for you. Let's move on to Justin. Thank you, Stephen. You bet. Okay. Justin is pongfit.org. And can you uh, tell me which page is the sure. big page that's getting all the, the traffic? Sure. So if you go under FAQs. Okay. And then official rules. All right. So I just noticed that you know traffic was spiking, and I think part because of pandemic, people were buying a lot of table tennis tables for home, and then they were having arguments, which I've heard my whole life. Hey, wait a minute, you can't serve that way, or no, if it touches the net, blah blah blah. And so I fleshed these out, and I looked at what people were searching for, and I mixed in table tennis and ping pong, blah blah blah. So these have been getting really good results, like on Google showing up, like definitely first page is not sometimes even a, sn a snippet at the top of the page that goes to PongFit, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, but so as you can see, there's nothing, there's no call to action necessarily on this page. It's just pure content. So I'm just mm -hmm. thinking what would be the best way 
to you know may have a newsletter sign up or later on when I'm selling gear, have a little you know buttons or banners at the top. What do you recommend? I would recommend having uh, either an exit pop and or uh, a, a right hand side panel like a, a column that has an uh, like some sort of free download, an irresistible offer that is relevant to these folks. Okay, you, you know, think... I do, sorry. Go ahead. I do have a, I have a poster that I've done up, nicely designed that has like the top 10 essential rules that people argue about. Um, that could be a good download. I'm thinking it's printable or just PDF. Yep, that sounds great. The top 10 things that uh, uh, people playing table tennis argue the most. Uh, what's the difference between table tennis and ping pong? Or are they the same? <laughs> that, I, that's actually one of the FAQs because it's a common question. Um, essentially, table tennis is the, uh, the official generic term for the sport. Ping pong is a trade name that Parker Brothers used to own like in 1920. So when the game got really big, the sport needed to come up with a new they couldn't just call it ping pong because that was actually owned by Parker Brothers. Is it still owned? Can you use it? It's owned by somebody, but it's not enforced because people pretty much use the term generically now, ping pong. Okay. Because one thing I noticed is your title tag says official rules of table tennis, pong fit. Yeah. And there's no mention of ping pong in the title tag. And that is the most important element as far as uh, Google's concerned on the page. Hmm. So if you want to rank for ping pong related uh, rules, keywords, that would be uh, a, 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 an easy <laughs> uh, next step for you is just add the word ping pong into mm. that. Okay. Yep. Okay. Cool. So as far as getting some conversions happening here, this does feel like a page that you would just kind of go over, read and say, wow, that was helpful. And then hit the back button or go somewhere else. Yeah. So having something that makes it uh, a no brainer for people to download the thing is going to be essential because we want people to go from uh, suspects to prospects and we want mm -hmm. them to go from uh, unknown, untraceable kind of anonymous people to first name and email addresses. Right. Getting a newsletter opt-in or sign up, uh, pop-up or, or um, invitation over on the right-hand side, not very compelling these days. Hasn't been compelling for a long time. I mean, how often do you see an opportunity to sign up for somebody's newsletter and you pass that by? <laughs> like, who, who wants more emails uh, coming into their inbox every day? So I would really focus on the free value of the, that PDF download. Okay. And you said exit pop-up, would that be some avenue for uh, email sign yeah, so, yeah, that would be. You could test uh, between the two, mm -hmm. see which one performs the best, or you end up maybe even using both. I don't know. But I, I, I do think that um, a... a right-hand uh, column is going to be helpful. Yeah. And what Why about you have white text on a black background? That's really hard to read. It looks small here Not when you're sharing, that. but um, I, it's mostly mobile, mobile that people are accessing and it seemed to be easy enough to read there. The whole site's just kind of a cool modern black. So if you go to the homepage, you can see. Um, I'm inclined to agree, though, even even in mobile, Justin, 100% uh, white on black. It's a little more challenging. It needs to be bigger to, to be legible, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah, again, it looks really small when I'm looking at it on your shared screen. Um, usually it tends to read a little bigger than that, I thought, but... Uh, yeah, it's hard to read. Okay. Uh, I, I don't recommend it. Uh, let's see. So there's a lot of stuff out there online about text. Um, 
not yeah. being okay. readable if it's white. Astigmatism and conference lines. There's one that's going into details on not doing the white text thing. Mm -hmm. And here's one on a UX movement, which is a user experience website. Yeah, that's I mean, I, I definitely, yeah, yeah I, I, yeah, I have heard that side of the argument before, for sure. Also, it's harder to read text when it's, uh, so on, on a desktop, which you're seeing my desktop, it's hard to read all the way across the screen this far. So that's why yeah. so many websites have multiple columns, because I would say it's getting really hard after this point, after the word disputes. Yeah. It just gets, it's got, yeah, it's just too difficult. Yeah, I, yeah no, I, I, I tried to get narrower columns on most of the site, but I guess um, some, I should adjust that for sure. Yeah, so that'll give you room for a right-hand column, and yeah. that's where you can offer the, uh, the free download. Yeah. That, that rule, the 10 rules everybody fights over, the 10 te table tennis rules everybody fights over. Sounds yeah. really compelling. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I also like chess at 90 miles an hour. Yeah, that's what they call a sport. It's a brain sport. <laughs> chess at 90 miles an hour. Yeah. I haven't heard that before. That's cool. Yeah, that's on our homepage. All right. Okay. So why is that not on this page? Well, I don't want to overdo it. I mean, well, that's because that's, that's more of a promotional thing. That's not about the rules. But if you go, go click on the you, logo there, you'll take, oh, well, let's, bounce, let's is our, bounce That's our tagline. And yeah, um, but, but I, I, I mean, there's, there's really a like lot, that, like the ultimate the, brain the, sport is another, if you scroll mm -hmm. down, that's a temporary thing, ping pong and quarantine. Um, are you being served is another one, but there's, yeah, there's chess at 90 miles an hour right there. Cause that's, that's my about, favorite. Yeah, okay. Chess at 90 miles an hour. That sounds really compelling. Now we are, we serve three, as you can see, three focus areas. Um, and there's three pillars, which is mental, physical, and community fitness. So the mental fitness part, that's where the chess at 90 miles an hour comes in. So that's one third of our overall offering or overall messaging. So um, for people who just want to have a lot of parties at work or workplace wellness, or they want to get better at table tennis, that's, this isn't as much applicable to them. This is more for the seniors and the neuroscience part of it, the chess at 90 miles an hour. So I didn't want to make that our overarching message. Gotcha. You know what I mean? I do like it though. <laughs> it's very okay. compelling. Well, I'm glad you okay. Like it. Okay. So uh, anything else that I can help with uh, on? Uh, on let's see. It, well, I guess first impressions of the homepage or just general UX impressions you have. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it feels old. This design seems like it was done 10 years ago. And um, don't for, forget about the ping pong quarantine. That's supposed to be campy. The rest, so pretend that's going to go away. Yeah. But even so, I just don't think this is a really contemporary looking design. Mm -hmm. if, if you're looking for a designer, I highly recommend Studio One. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned their quiz, but this is uh, their site, studioandesign.com. Okay. I just love uh, what they do. There's some examples here, and they designed stephenspencer.com and Marketing Speak, my podcast website, and my wife's website, orionsmethod.com. And I send all my clients to them. So okay. this is what my homepage looks like. And this is Marketing Speak, which is one of my two podcasts. We just launched this design uh, about four or five months ago. Cool. Yeah, they do great work. Okay. That was Studio One, right? Studio yeah. O N E. Okay. Uh, just the number one. Oh, okay. Thank you. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Anything else? 
Uh, no, that's to do it for now. Thank you. Okay. You bet. Hey, what's up? By the way, I would say you should have a contact uh, option here in your nav list. Join the mm. cause. I don't know what that means, so it's unlikely people are going to click on that. Uh, about, that's pretty straightforward. Research. Uh, I don't know that that's really the most compelling language to use there. Yeah, that, that's uh, usually I, I send that targeted page to people when we're okay. already discussing, like, here's the research we've done. So, okay. Yeah. So maybe contact. even just saying our research. Um, but it's, it's third party research. Oh, okay. Or let's see what research about what um, benefits of table tennis. Why not just call it benefits of table tennis? Or why table tennis? Yeah. I would be more inclined to click on that. Like research sounds really heady and academic and kind of boring. I, I probably wouldn't click on it. You could kind of get a little clever here and call that the, the why, and then you could have the what and the how. Just be careful about that because it can get uh, a little too clever and not as obvious and straightforward. But yeah, I'm not loving research as the section. Uh, do you get much click uh, uh, volume on this? No, but again, it's not. that's not really generally set up as a magnet for click for, for uh, searching. It's really, again, like if you're like, oh, what, what kind of, this is after we're mid, you know, maybe mid funnel. It's like, yeah, well, I'll send him a link. Here's some of the, I'll send you some articles on mental fitness and community fitness through ping pong. You know what I mean? Yeah. What about two tabs or two buttons, one mental fitness and one physical fitness? Mm. Yeah. I, I want to grow it. this area first because it's kind of sparse so far, but yeah, okay. I, I see that. It's okay. I, I would, even if you only have five things each, if you kind of uh, expand that out and maybe include a little bit of, uh, I don't know, data or uh, screenshots or um, you know logos or something to help add some more yeah, stuff to this page, if it's going to mm -hmm. be broken into two pages, yeah, yeah, physical okay. fitness and mental fitness. I like that. What do you guys think? I like it. Yep. Anyone else? <laughs> yep. Uh, Brad is a there's a thumbs up. Justin, um, just just wanted to kind of like you know bring this onto your radar. This I used to play a lot of badminton before quarantine, and I know this crowd is kind of at home now. They're, they're they're looking to something to do, and all the badminton courts are close, uh, especially in San Gabriel Valley area. So I'm not sure if, you know, if, if this could be a great opportunity for them to have something at home, which is quite similar to badminton. Just putting it out there. Oh yeah, all the, all the badminton people are feeling restless at home for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> that could be a good opportunity. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. If you really yeah. want to like yeah. uh, stir up some some trouble, you could uh, write an article. Uh, why badminton is dead? <laughs> right. <laughs> <And> <laughs> long yeah. live table tennis, and then uh, dri drive all the badminton people bonkers. <laughs> yeah, my son loves that. I've been really, hitting my site. We've been getting into badminton a lot, and we also have a ping pong table. So you know. Cool. So it's been fun, man. So we play a lot of ping pong and badminton in the backyard. So here's here's an yeah, it's article great for the pandemic that yeah. uh, went viral, thirty million views. New York City is dead forever. Oh, and, and also published in August. So if you could do something like, um, I mean, you'd have to be really uh, comfortable with it because you're going to get a lot of haters. Oh, they're going to hate you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs>
Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's the war I want to fight right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rip badminton. <laughs> uh, Stefan, I, I did a bunch of changes based on some of the things you were saying. So okay. I don't know when, uh, who's turned. I'm getting a little late, but whenever you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you feel complete for now, uh, Justin? Oh, yeah. No, this is good stuff. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. Stefan, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, no problem. Okay, so let's move on to Nandika and then uh, Harry and uh, and then Brad. So hypnosistheory.com. Here we go. Yeah. Therapy, therapy, and Reiki. This, uh, this looks a little bit like a kind of a keyword stuffed bunch of <laughs> text there for SEO. Anxiety relief, confidence building, weight release, qu uh, quit smoking, past life regression, overcome addiction. Uh, there's this SEO um, uh, joke about uh, SEO walks into a bar. Have you yeah. seen this one? This is pretty, no. funny. it reminds me. So uh, this is <laughs> what I'm reminded of when I see your homepage. SEO expert walks into a bar, bars, pub, public house, Irish pub, <laughs> drinks, beer, wine, liquor, Grey Goose, Crystal. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, so a little bit uncomfortable with that. But okay. That doesn't feel readable and meant for the the visitor. And it probably isn't working either. It's probably not getting you on page one for confidence building or past life regression, I'm guessing. No, I, I am not getting any results at all. Um, so. Okay, yeah. well, hopefully we can change that. Uh, <laughs> one thing I, I wanna look at is how much domain authority you have. I'm gonna use a tool called Majestic, which I've shown before. I'm not logged in at the moment because I do have a paid account, but you don't have a paid account, I'm sure. So this is the data that you would get for free uh, just uh, as a non-logged in user. Yeah. This tells me a lot though. You only have one website linking to you. That's it. That's not good. We need hundreds of sites linking to you. So we got to get started on this. This this is why you're not ranking. So we could focus on all sorts of stuff to do on the website itself, but that wouldn't fix the problem that nobody's linking to you. One website out of the entire internet, out of trillions of URLs on the internet, only one is linking to you. What do you mean by linking to him? What what Stephen? What, what site were you who would link to him? Well, if oh, okay, so Nandika is getting uh um mentored uh uh oh gosh his name just escaped me how did that happen ken dubner um ken dubner is mentoring nandika is he still doing that is that right uh well right now it's, it's more of a friendship yeah i mean ken is always going to be okay. someone that i'll be hitting up with questions okay. okay so if you ask ken hey ken would you mind mentioning me on your website somewhere and and linking to my website oh, he, might, he might say yes and if he says yes and he does it that's going to go from one website to two websites that's going to double the number of websites linking to you and and why does this matter if google sees that nobody's linking to you they think that well the algorithm thinks that you're nobody Right. Could contrast that with a site like um, vice.com or buzzfeed.com or yahoo.com or uh, first gov. Tons can you and just tons like and tons of sites are linking to the, those sites. Can you make a bunch of websites and Wix that link to your website or do people actually have to click through or what's the... Those, yeah, so the algorithm looks for that kind of spammy behavior. Like, oh, these look like uh, sites that are all owned by the same entity and are trying to game the system. So then all of the sites will get penalized. So yeah, don't do that. <laughs> uh, Stephen, no, these uh, need to be the... links earned by merit. 
Okay. What was yeah. the site? What was, what the, was the tool you were using? What was the tool you were just looking at to? Yeah, see it was Majestic. Was Majestic.com. Thank you. Yep. There it is. Majestic.com. That's just one of uh, a number of different tools out there that do link analysis. Uh, that's one that gives you some free data. Mm -hmm. So I recommend uh, checking your number of websites linking and actually more importantly is your trust flow and your citation flow. And you can only uh, do a few searches for free and then it locks you out for the month. So what is the trust flow and citation flow? Uh, trust flow is a trust uh, a metric. It approximates trust rank. I don't want to get too far into the into the weeds of the the technical side of it, but um, it's a weighted form of of um, link popularity, but weighted towards trust. And the way that they do that is rather than starting with a random seed set of sites and then calculating page rank outward, uh, they start with a trusted seed set of sites. So what would be some super high trust websites? Oh, Stanford.edu, MIT.edu, Harvard.edu, uh, FirstGov, National Science Foundation, CERN in Switzerland, et cetera. So start with some seed sites like that and do the the page rank algorithm uh, calculations, and then you skew towards more trust. And that's essentially roughly what Google is doing these days rather than randomly calculating. Um, so that way, if you're uh, getting links from super high trust websites, you should get rewarded for that versus just important websites that don't have uh, much trustworthiness to them, right? So Breitbart, for example, a lot of um, importance, but not, not so much trust. And thus getting a link from the New York Times would be much more desirable than Breitbart. And I'm not trying to be political here. I'm just <laughs> stating a fact here that the trustworthiness score will be higher with the New York Times. And so that would be a, a higher... Uh, quality link to go after and and uh, trust is is essential to the rankings algorithm so if i looked at um uh the like google quality rater guidelines which has been leaked many times um and now it's actually f freely available and just google for it they stopped caring about it being secret. So Google has an army of quality raters that uh, grade your websites and lots of websites. And then that gets fed into a machine learning algorithm to do that across the rest of the internet. And by having uh, a, a high trust websites linking to you, see, see this section here, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. If you don't look trustworthy, then you get a eh, and Google doesn't like your website. I should take off the Viagra link on my website. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Oh, yes, you should. But if Viagra uh, sites link to you, that's even worse because <laughs> it's about getting links that are low quality. Uh, yeah. Gossip websites payday loan websites, casino websites, those would not be desirable links to get. All right. Um, let's go back to hypnosis theory. And we need something that's like a link magnet for you, Nandika. Something that yeah. people would feel uh, like it's a no-brainer to link to you. Like how PongFit has those uh, rules on table tennis. That's a very helpful resource. So what is the most amazing piece of content that you have on your site currently? Um, probably, um, I don't really have any, uh, well, maybe oh, okay. frequently asked questions, uh, possibly. 
Yeah, that doesn't really make the cut <laughs> as far as like remarkable content that people can uh, it's just like they, they can hardly contain themselves, but to write about you on their blog and then link to you. Um, Nadeke, you know what I'm thinking? Just the top of the head would for me yeah. would be uh, like a five minute anti freak out session. Like, are you, you know, freaked out about pandemic, about your kids, about school, COVID, whatever. Here's yeah. a five minute exercise, just something, a little one page nugget that is based in your practice. A little teaser, cool. but it, you know, awesome. you know what I mean? Yeah, you could also have a video in, uh, included with that and embed the YouTube video on that page. Because you probably okay. could walk them through a little hypnosis exercise on the video. Yeah, great yeah. idea, Justin. Okay, so you got to do some further thinking and, and work on creating that irresistible piece of content. It's a, it's a linkable asset, right? And yeah. that's going to help you with getting links, but then we got to get the word out and not just hope that people discover your website. So you're going to have to contact people like you're going to contact Ken and say, yeah. hey, I've got this really cool resource. Got it. Um, I was thinking about creating a video for theory, of, explaining the theory of the mind, uh, you know, how the mind works subconscious and conscious. Would that something be good to add, do you think? Uh, it's not as easy to get links to a piece of content like that, because that sounds a little confusing. Clarity uh -huh. is your friend. If it sounds really clear and effective, like the like the 10 things that everybody gets wrong about past life regression sounds way more enticing to me at least than uh, what you just described. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So come on back and oh. share what, what you uh, came up with and, you know, wherever you got to with it and uh, we'll help guide you to the next stage and hopefully you'll have multiple of these linkable assets on your site. Awesome, thank you so much, Stefan. Uh, for uh, mentioning Reiki on the landing page, do you think that's a, that's a bad idea? I do energy I work also. I don't think it's a bad idea. I, I do okay. think that you really should have a page all about Reiki and not just mention it in passing. Okay. What is yeah. Reiki? Why does it work? How, how do you do Reiki? Like, what are some of the results? Okay. Yeah. I, I, if I'm at all interested in Reiki, I want to see more about that. This isn't enough. Just a, a, a paragraph about Reiki. Got it. I'm, I'm not sold. <laughs> not yet. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I believe in Reiki, but uh, you're not trying to convince people who don't. You're trying to get people who believe in Reiki that you are a great resource for Reiki. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. So next, uh, Harry and then uh, Brad. So we'll do this quick um so you're looking for some ammo uh to get them motivated to prioritize seo correct okay so let's start in this with... particular campaign i'm going to yep. say this campaign we're doing is one for southwest airlines who is now flying directly into palm springs uh they've been trying to get them to do that for 10 years and couldn't do it and now all the airlines know that the first destinations to open up are going to be the ones that have a lot of outdoor activity mm -hmm. right so it's a combination of southwest airlines and uh, greater visiting greater palm springs mm -hmm. and the other thing i'll tell you is greater palm springs their bureau uh, represents nine of the cities including palm springs proper but palm springs proper has their own tourism and convention uh you know board they have like a i think a two million dollar a year budget where Greater mm -hmm. Palm Springs has like a $20 million a year budget. Uh, and that's not really that large for a, you know, major, you know, destination. Uh, 
you know, Visit California has like a $200 million uh, budget, but uh, so we're doing a campaign for them to get people to fly out on Southwest Airlines to, you know, to this destination. But I'm curious what you think of, and Visit Greater Palm Springs, if, you go, if you've gone there, they, uh, they're all over the place. You know, they've got a YouTube channel, they've got, yeah. they've got all kinds of social media as well as broadcast. Right. But if we're trying to get them convinced that SEO is uh, a priority, then we want to focus on the website rather than their social. And uh, this is one good data point for you to share is how terribly they score with uh, uh, PageSpeed Insights, which is a Google tool. They're not passing core web vitals. So you could share that that's going to get their website demoted in, in Google in May when the page experience update comes out. So core web vitals, there's an article on samuelschmidt.com that explains core web vitals that I think is very good. And uh, yeah, bottom line is when that algorithm comes online, sites that don't pass, including visit greaterpalmsprings.com are gonna get slapped. Interesting, good to know. Okay. So that's, that's one. Um, let's look at another tool called Ahrefs. I'm taking some screen grabs as you do this. Okay, no problem. Okay, so this is uh, Owen. I'm I'm re or Metal is recording this, so. When I get the recording, I'll post this to my YouTube channel, this whole video. Great. I do that every week. Okay, so this is uh, also concerning. You see how things are heading south? All right. So maybe screenshot that and say, hey, <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't where you should be heading, is uh, heading south like that. It started happening, you peaked in September and then it's been downhill ever since. Interesting, I wonder why. Well, we just wanna ratchet up the pain and then the analysis of figuring out why and what to do to fix it, that comes after they've got their wallet open. <laughs> right, right, the research. Funds yeah, because yeah, doing an audit takes time and, and, and analysis and we don't know yet why it's heading south, but the keyword numbers are heading down too. So they're ranking for fewer keywords than they were in September. You see that? Yep. And then they they did well for a little while in the month of November and then right back down. <clears throat> they may have launched a campaign and that's something Sonic Gods is really good at. These one-off like competition kind of, or, you know, uh, rewards programs things they offer you'll see a yeah. spike hmm. you know that's they do the pixel tracking it's very clear that the campaign worked yeah okay so there are a couple of data points uh, for you i don't think you need a lot you just need to say hey this is really concerning and it's urgent this isn't something to put off until you know q3 or q4 because the page experience update from google is coming in may and also things have already been heading south. We don't want to head further south. So that's enough of a story there, uh, painting enough of a picture, I think that would motivate them. If you need more, let me know. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Well, I have one question for you. How does social tie into this? I mean- uh, so, you know, Social is a, an adjunct that helps to uh, get the word out to people who would potentially be linkerati or influencers that Google sees as influencers. It's an indirect benefit, therefore. So if I can get my piece of content, the you know, table tennis rules or or uh, you know the the 10 biggest ways people cheat with table tennis or whatever, that sounds like a really good title, by the way. Um, <laughs> and I post that somewhere that ends up, let's say I post it on Reddit makes it onto the front page of Reddit, gets a ton of, of visibility and then traffic. And then some small percentage of that traffic will then turn into links because some blogger says, wow, 
I love table tennis. I didn't know these things. I'm going to post a, a blog post about it and link to, to Justin's resource, All right? So that happens kind of organically if you're in front of people and they say, wow, this is remarkable. This is cool. This is awesome. I love this. So that's where social media comes into play. And so do you include the YouTube channel as a social channel as opposed to? Um, it's both a search engine and social. So mm -hmm. yeah, I include it as, as part of the social, um, but I'd also can include it as part of the SEO strategy. Okay. So Brad, um, I, I know we've <laughs> almost ran up to the top of the hour, but I do want to uh, hear from you. What, what did you accomplish uh, that you wanted to, Go over with me. Oh, you're on mute. Still on mute. It is, it is fuelmusic.com now. Okay. So I, I got that linked up. Yay. Congrats. So yeah, that's always been a question that everybody asks when I try to get in the website. So I have fuelmusic.com. I was able to negotiate with them using uh, Chris Foss techniques. So they were asking between like, you know, they're asking about five grand. So I got them down to like 2765 or something. That's fabulous. Yeah. Nicely done. Uh, thank hey. you, Chris. Yeah. Uh, I also put the, you mentioned putting the, you know, on the, the logos, social page. proof logos. Yeah. Yeah. That looks great. Nicely done. Big improvements. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's looking slick. I like the, yeah. the white on black text. Yeah, and I also <laughs> changed the um, chain. My, my brother helped me change the statement. I had something before, but I tried to have you know, music that fuels emotion because I, what I try to make my unique proposition is, uh, you know, being emotional and connecting with their audience. Um, yeah. For SEO, my real goal was when people type in fuel music, like they'll know they'll remember the name, but they want to find the site. So, you know, if they type in fuel music, I'm hoping they're going to find me and possibly, you know, jingles or music licensing for commercials probably would be the other thing that I would yeah. want people to find me. Yeah. So I'm not going to be able to answer all that in, in just a minute we have left. Uh, so please come back. But I do want to say that you're going to need to get some links to this fuelmusic.com site because if, again, we use Majestic and we look at, uh, well, either fuelmusic.rocks or fuelmusic.com, you don't have much link authority, not much trust flow or citation flow, and only 11 websites link to you. So that's for the .rocks and then for the .com. There's only three there. So I'd like to see hundreds of sites linking to you. That's going to help you significantly, not just to rank for Fuel Music, which is the most important thing right now, but to rank also for other keywords. So um, it probably won't take uh, 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 as much as hundreds of, of high quality links. But yeah, you, you, you need to put some effort into that because you're not even on page one or page two, fuel music dot, or like, this looks like page three or something. So what would be the first hit to do that? What would be the number, first thing you would Get do? a bunch of metal members to link to you. Ask for, for you know, <laughs> friends to uh, add you to their resources list or page on their site, or uh, you'll offer a testimonial or something to people so that they can um, include that on their site and their praise page and then link from that testimonial to your site when, when they mentioned so it. Do people have to actually click through? Like if I did a testimonial nope. to you. No, nobody has to click. It just has to be a link that. Can I give you a there. testimonial? <laughs> you may. Uh, um, yeah, I, I'll, guys, I'll do that for all you. All you guys get a testimonial. Look okay. at all you. So we got to wrap it up. But uh, yeah, you do need links and that's a, a, a big um, kind okay, of so I'm gonna do a hole for right now. So I'm going to do a resource link that has some like helpful information? No, no. This is for people to do to, for you. So okay. they're going to link from their resource page, their links page, their blog, their uh, praise page or testimonials page, wh whatever uh, place that makes sense because essentially you're going to be 
And then you were saying I should have a, a page of helpful information for other people. You need to have linkable assets on your site. And helpful mm-hmm. information is a good starting point, but try and make it remarkable. Like what I described for uh, Justin, the 10... Uh, the the 10 table tennis uh the 10 big whatever it was i said <laughs> that sounded and really good rules at the time people fight about the most yeah I like that the, the 10 table tennis rules people fight up fight about the most that sounds really compelling so what's your equivalent to that and then what would i call that on the banner what, what would that be resources? Maybe under resources or learn or uh i don't know blog it could be a blog yep Okay. All right, guys. Awesome. Nice mic. All right. So just a heads up, I'm not going to be doing next week. I am in a full day workshop uh, with strategic coach. So I'm not able to, uh, to do this next week, but the week after I'll see you again. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Hey guys. Stephen. Great Thank you guys. Stephen. See you guys. See you guys. Bye guys. Bye guys.